Hello everyone, this is uh, Christian Gires from uh, NewcastleNow.org. Uh, thank you for joining us. And um, how is it over in Newcastle right now, actually? I mean, I am very jealous of... Uh, I, I miss American food. <laughs> I've been uh, hungry for a year. Like yeah. And we, and we love good Chinese food. Oh, great. Then we, we, should, we, should, we should figure <laughs> something out after this. <laughs> So, so I, I want me to show you the kitchen again? Oh, that would be great. Uh, we, we love taking a look at the newsroom. Oops. Uh, see, that, that's, what, that's what we call a newsroom. There, spatulas do not stop news from happening. <laughs> here's my shaking plate. And here's the, uh, here's the desk. Ah, where we sit. I, ah, sit, I sit, sit all the time. Is that it? Oh, nice, beautiful, l l full top to bottom windows and doors. That's, that's, hmm? Yeah, yeah, nice, beautiful top to bottom uh, yeah. windows. That's great. So, so I'll tell you, this is now that you mentioned big windows. This is an upscale community uh -huh. with a high achieving school district, <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, so so that uh, you know schools are all the uh, are all the topic here. School, as you've noticed, if you read our pages, it's a yes. lot of school news. Yes, we uh, saw a lot of school school board, Yeah, the school board is, you know, three quarters of our budget is schools. One <laughs> quarter is town. Yeah. So it, it naturally is a big topic. Um, so it was, and in fact, we began, I'd say my partners and I in the paper met over a school board matter. That is when oh. the, uh, the school board, um, school board um, made a move to... Uh, wanted to build a, a second middle school um, on the high school campus. And people thought that that was not a good idea. We, we said, people in this neighborhood, which is near the high school, said, we've got a lot of high school school traffic in the high school. We don't want to double it. And uh, the school board, but the school board decided it wanted the high school property. So, uh, and it decided it kind of, uh, well, in a sort of shortcut of process. So we, we got together a few a few people who minded this decision, and uh, we got together and with a lot of effort uh, to be heard, um, we got them to uh, change their mind and go back a little bit and and redo the uh, do a, we have a, we had a redo on that process, but uh, the middle school was put elsewhere, but we saw how hard it was to to get people um, to get people together to to express their their opposing opinions when when the organization was all on the other side you know the school district the school board the uh, everyone was ranged against you know arranged arranged to do what they wanted to do yeah. so even though a lot of people didn't like the idea there was no easy way to get that to to tell people that we minded and we were completely dependent on the occasional like a letter to the editor to a paper in White Plains. You know, occasionally there would be letters to the editor and we all hung on those small letters. Yeah. But they were printing letters from all kinds of towns around us. It was not, uh, we didn't have, you know, we didn't have um, big space there. And that newspaper actually went under um, a few years later. Um, and we have New York Times is in New York City uh, nice. and everywhere in the world, but but the New York Times has a Westchester section, but it also treats, you know, Long Island and New Jersey in that section. Oh. <laughs> and uh, so it pays attention to us somewhat, but not the kind of attention we needed. So um, then after, so after that uh, school board matter, we, um, uh, just about four years ago, five years ago now, a developer came to Chappaqua and purchased mm -hmm. the Reader's Digest property. Mm -hmm. um, Reader's Digest stayed there, although they're now having financial difficulties anyway. Yeah. But they sold their property and leased back space, so they're a tenant there now. The developer said, um, "We have the Reader's Digest as a tenant, and we'll get you know other tenants. And uh, but we also want to build 348 condominiums on the property and have a mixed-use campus." Well, people minded that very much, and again, we felt we were in that same position of of having a big organization um, with something in mind and no way to easily tell what people were thinking in response. So um, 
There was, um, in fact, there was a website developed in, in our neighborhood um, to get people together and, and educate people about mm -hmm. what the developer's intention was and how other people felt, felt about it. And uh, that website was really kind of the model, um, kind of, for this one. Because mm -hmm. since that website, um, that, that sort of Reader's Digest opposition website, um, the... Uh, the, since then, a lot of citizen journalism type things had been had come to our attention, and in fact, um, you know McNeil Lair the report on our public TV. Uh, no, I haven't. Um, seen. Sorry about that. It's so they the the public um, Jim Lair now runs it. It's a uh, channel thirteen oh, okay. public television, right? Yeah. So they did a story, and you can look up these people too. We, they did a story on um, a website. A couple of people in uh, Deerfield, New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. and it was called the News Forum and I saw this very brief clip on television about the News Forum and that they'd begun a paper mm -hmm. hyper-local, internet only yes. the online paper in their town and, um, and, and they showed the, they, they showed the uh, grantor of their startup money University mm -hmm. of Maryland, JLab JLab has since moved to American University, by the way. But yeah. when we were applying for our money and when we were seeing television, the, the uh, Deerfield people on TV, yeah. it was at Maryland. So, um, and JLab was connected to the, um, was interested in all sorts of citizen journalism um, ideas and startups. And so we applied to them. Now, when we wrote to them, we in our application, we said... Um, we told them about uh, how we'd met, the controversies in our town, that it made us realize how valuable it is to have a voice for people in general. Uh, and and the, the other example we gave them, should I keep going? I hear oh, no, 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 that's, okay, that's my neighbors. <laughs> oh, yeah, stop me anytime, stop me anytime. Um, so the example that we gave them in our grant proposal, we... Um, there had been yet another controversy in our town about where to place a 9-11 memorial, um, whether it should be at a duck pond in the center of town yeah. or, or whether it shouldn't, whether it should be elsewhere. And for a long time that, that discussion went on. And uh, we knew um, a woman who had been very involved in it. And um, she was, um, was uh, a dean at uh, Columbia Teachers College. Karen Zumwalt, and she told us that after, and this is what we said in our grant, mm -hmm. um, because we loved her story, she said that after a couple of years of this controversy, she had foiled a freedom of information law. Yes. She, she had asked, in freedom for, in, under freedom of information law, she'd asked to see all the correspondence of the board uh, in that took place during the couple of years that people had been fighting about it. Yes. And she got the documents, she got the letters, and she took two days to read through them all. She said, after reading those um, letters, she, she was so impressed with the, the quality of the writing and the quality of the sentiment that they were very, that they were well written, that they'd been well thought, they were heartfelt letters. Yeah. And she said, if, if these letters had ever seen the light of day, the controversy wouldn't have raged so long, and it wouldn't have been so um, uncomfortable for people. And that's what we said to um, our the grant people, our grant grantors. We said we want to have that kind of thing permanently. We want to have a way for people to know what other people are thinking, to get together with them, and to uh, discuss a thing openly, and uh, and then go from there. So those were the sort of three different controversies that, that caused us to, uh, to think that this might be a very good thing to have on a permanent basis. So we looked at very carefully at the Deerfield site mm -hmm. to see who, how it worked. I mean, we were, we're middle-aged women. You know, we are mm -hmm. not, we, we, we've done email and we know how to make a Word document, but, but not much else. But the, there are very easy tools now. Expression Engine is the one we use, but, mm -hmm. um, and we've learned to mount these things uh, ourselves. So um, 